This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. We're getting another Dark Phoenix story, Mason. Oh, good. But who could forget the very first Dark Phoenix story? And I'm not talking about the comics, Mason. But that was the first one. I'm not talking about the comics, Mason. What are you talking about? I'm, of course, talking about X-Men 3, The Last Stand. Oh, right. Yeah, this came out in 2006. It capped off... The original X-Men trilogy. It doesn't feel like a 2006 movie. What does it feel like to you? It feels like a 1999 movie. (laughs) Well, let's just say a lot of these X-Men movies have carried over certain traits from earlier X-Men films. And there are people out there going, it does feel like a 1999 (laughs) movie. (laughs) Oh, not in 2006. Yeah, yeah, you better believe it. Okay, I'll say this of this movie. It's universally hated. Yes. I don't think it's that much worse than the previous two X-Men movies. I don't think it's better. No. But I think, on the whole... It's, it's on par in a, in a lot of ways. I think so too, yeah. Yeah, that's not a stirring endorsement. No, I mean, there's some there's some low points, I think. Yes. I was going to say, there's some low points, but there's low points in the other movies. There really aren't that many low points in the other movies. Especially 2. Yeah. 2's quite good. Mm. But the thing is, the production of this went through a tumultuous time. Okay, I'm it ready to hear about it. ended up being directed by Brett Ratner. Brett the Rat Ratner. The Rat. Who, like Brian Singer, who directed the previous ones. Is... Punch in the Face Entertainment yes. or whatever his <laughs> that's right. production company's called. Yeah, apparently, they, yeah, neither of them not very nice men for different reasons mm. but they offered the director's job to Darren Aronofsky who okay. worked with Hugh Jackman on The Fountain right. uh, Joss Whedon but he was working on Wonder Woman Alex uh, Pryros how do you say that guy's name who? The guy who did Dark City. Oh, Proyas. Proyas, thank you. But he was feuding with Fox Okay. and he wanted to make <laughs> gods of Egypt and <laughs> kings of gods of men of Egypt. Okay, I just want to pause just to be like whatever the, whatever the sentence you were trying to say there I cannot believe it. He wanted to make gods of Egypt. Have you seen gods of Egypt? I have not. I have oh, not. look! It's ridiculous. It's kind of, look. It's no, kind that- of a. It's kind of a fun watch. If you're skimming it, if you if you if you're doing something else, put on gods of Egypt and just come in every once in a while and be like, "That's ridiculous." Okay, back to the ironing. Like a big hawk costume, but it's like Iron Man's yeah. over a person. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good movie. The, um, bloody Jeffrey Rush is. A, he's there to stop the monster eating the sun or something. Who's eating the sun? Who be eating a the monster. sun? Monster. Don't be eating the sun. Sorry. How big's this monster? You're big, big enough to eat the sun. Well, you'd, you'd hope so. Yeah. No, but he was feuding with Fox. Uh-huh. Uh, Zack Snyder, but he was doing 300. Okay. Uh, Peter Berg turned it down and actually hired Matthew Vaughn, who ended up doing X Men: First Class, which I believe is one of the best X-Men movies. Agreed. But he uh, he left due to time constraints. He was like, well, I can't get this done in the allotted time period, so I'm out. But he actually did First Class in less of time to do the movie. But he did it. Terrific. So we got Brett the Rat Ratner. Oh, yes. Yeah. Who was doing nothing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he was just floating around in like a big inflatable donut in his pool in his backyard. <laughs> I think and I'm he... like, hey, Ratner, you want to do a movie? And he's like, all right. What's a movie? <laughs> Oh, don't worry, I'll figure it out on the day. <laughs> don't even worry about it. I think you might have been coming off the back of Superman Flyby. Oh, which another which didn't, unproduced Superman Yeah, movie. which wasn't getting done. But the reason Ryan Singer didn't do this movie is because he went to make Superman Returns. Right. So, But we'll get into more of the, the fallout of that a bit later. Mm-hmm. This was the first time I'd seen digital de-aging. It's, yeah, right? It's not very good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but I would argue it's better than X Men Origins Wolverine First Class Agreed. Origins. Yep, one hundred percent. Gambit. Yes, Gambit Origin. One hundred percent. Yeah, but I remember the time thinking this is that's a neat trick. Like yeah. I, I like that. And I think it was also like I I forgive it in the sense that it seems to be it almost feels like it's kind of a surreal sepia tone yes. past where it's like well, did this past even happen kind of thing. So well, I'm okay with it kind no, of. No, because glossy. they retconned everything. Well, maybe so no, it didn't happen. Oh, <laughs> jokes on me. <laughs> Rand is always 12 steps ahead, you know? He knew they were going to retcon it into a future past situation, you know? He always knew. Mm. But, yeah, look, it's not good. But the funny thing is, I think there is a charm to that de-aging because it's one of the first times, if not the first time. And also, it's funny, the methods of de-aging a person hasn't really changed since back then. It's you a, put Vaseline on the lens. That's all you need your to do. Your film is normal. Spray their hair dark, go for your life. Yep. But it really is, it's just... It's like virtual surgery. It's just like pinning back areas on the face, and they've just got better at doing it. Like yeah, right. If you look at like modern Marvel movies, for example, it's pretty it's pretty flawless yeah, nowadays. Right. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's mo- it's pretty much the same technique. And all that. I mean, and and they just they do it based on you know the hundreds of hours of Jean Luc Picard. Yeah, that's in right. Star Trek: The Next Generation. <laughs> <laughs> so here's an element of the story which I like, but is completely disregarded mm-hmm. almost entirely: the introduction of Angel. 
as a kid. Not yeah, the introduction right. of Angel from X Men Apocalypse Dark Origins. Mm. Uh, it's where he's like grating off his angel wings in yeah, the bathroom. Right, uh-huh. Terrific. Like, it is, and it's, yeah. there's elements of the story that I'm like, maybe if you just focused on that one thing, it would have made a good movie instead of doing like Origin of Angel and Dark Phoenix. Yeah, right. And the Mutant Cure. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's the. I feel that's the downfall of a lot of. I mean, probably also kind of superhero movies to this day. But I mm. feel especially sort of in the early days of modern superhero movies, you know, so your Spider-Mans and your X-Mens, is they went, okay, well, we have 30-plus years of continuity for these characters. We don't know what to put on screen. Yeah. Let's put everything Let's on screen. Let's do it all. Like, and, you know, and I, I've often said this about the Spider-Man movies, is that Spider-Man is often considered, like, he's he's a fun, happy-go-lucky character, and every once, you know, every 10 years something tragic happens to him. Yeah. But in the, in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, everything tragic. They just compacted it in <laughs> to, like, six hours. They went, every, everything bad that's happened, let's show it, let's show it all kind of thing. But he's... He's still got the quips, doesn't he? The answer I mean, is barely. He yeah, barely know. doesn't. Because doesn't 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 yeah. he's so sad. Yeah, but you're right. Because his bike wheel went out the window. Yeah, of course. In Spider Man 2. He couldn't pay his rent. No, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, and, and this is the same where it's like, okay, well, we do have so many sagas to get through. And we we just can't wait. So let's let's throw them all in there. Which d- does let's dis- do them all, so we've got no ideas in <laughs> yeah. the future. Yeah, it do- and it does a disservice to all of them. And then again, it drains it drains the brains trust, so that in ten to fifteen years' time, they just have to do the Dark Phoenix saga again. <laughs> That's you right, know? exactly. It does have the introduction of the live action uh, Danger Room, which oh, is yeah. just mm-hmm. a big unrealistic hologram room. But it's the near future or whatever. This came yeah. out in two thousand and six. I guess it's two thousand and ten. I guess yeah, <laughs> it's right. never uh-huh. that far ahead. Yeah. There's a moment where Wolverine cuts the head off a sentinel and then he throws it and it mm-hmm. lands and it spins and yeah. then he steps out behind it. But if you watch that entire shot, he's never on it. Okay, right. He's, he's, not, he's not on the back of it. He's no, not he's in crawling, it. he's crawling really fast around it. So no, he's not, he's, not he's, he's not doing, doing that. He's not doing that. He's skulking like a cockroach <laughs> around the head. Did you go back and forth on that? Like yeah, I did. Of time? Was, is this your Zapruder <laughs> film? You're like, That's back it. and to the left. Back and to the left. Nope, he's never on there. Everyone said I was crazy, but he's, he's never been on there. <laughs> I remember being impressed that they included the Sentinels, but it's really not a good representation. And they still haven't really done it properly. No, I mean, we got the, the Days of Future Past Sentinels. Yeah. I don't mind the future ones because that's what they would evolve to. Yeah. But the 60s or 70s ones are kind of like, this is a bad design. That's the perfect time to have giant multi-shades of purple. I agree. 100 foot tall Sentinels. I 100% agree. The swinging 60s. Yes. Here's some other things that I like. I'm ready. Kelsey Grammer is excellently cast I agree. as Beast. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nicholas Holt, I'm sure he's fine. Yep. This guy's way better. <laughs> you sure he's fine? Well, he's mostly just Nicholas Holt. He's like, I got a serum. I got That's a serum true, in yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's always but just got a serum. I feel the post first class X-Men universe is just various actors who are now, you know, a little bit too popular and, and expensive for these movies going, just say I have a serum actually. <laughs> Just have a serum because I don't want to wear any of this. I don't want to put any of this makeup. I will spend 15 minutes in the makeup yeah. chair. Just say I've got a serum. Well, Alan Cummings, who played Nightcrawler, was like, I'm not coming back to, to yeah, sit in the makeup absolutely. chair for 45 hours. Yeah. Also, I like Alan Page's Kitty Pride. I think that's also a good inclusion. Mm-hmm. Like, the good stuff from this movie has carried on. Or I some agree, of it. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Angel, I think, is cast well, but it, again, it's That's it's Ben pointless. Foster, right? It's From 310 Yuma. I like that guy. Yeah. What I find interesting about that moment where they go to cure Ben Foster, where Ben Foster's dad's like, Ben Foster, you're a real ugly bloke and we're going to get you in this chair. Look at yourself, mate. He's beautiful. Yeah, right? That man is literally an angel. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're just some middle-aged, slump-shouldered, dumb be looking idiot. Yeah, right. And you're like, my son's a freak. Yeah. You're a fucking freak. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's amazing. <laughs> he can fucking fly. And what's what's interesting, I also feel is like, this is right on the cusp, I think. And this is, I think, part of the reason maybe the X-Men feel a little bit dated in this era. Because this is just on the cusp of like, if social media existed and you had wings and you could fly... <laughs> You wouldn't be cutting them off. You'd no, be, you'd be you'd be flying. You'd be flying on. You'd be bloody flying on bloody Snapchat. Absolutely, you'd be flying on bloody. You'd be flying on Vine. You'd be swinging off bloody Vine. You'd be swinging on vines. Yeah, on Vine. You'd be, yeah, you'd be rich. You'd have yeah. a reality TV show based around you. You definitely... the man who has angel wings and can fly and abs. Yeah, and abs. <laughs> Such good abs. He does have good abs. And they'd be like, "What do you think about other mutants?" You'd be like, "I've never met me." It's just as far as I'm concerned, it's just me, a beautiful man with abs who can fly <laughs> there's of course the inclusion of other mutants which aren't as good yeah. uh, i'm gonna go through some i'm ready uh, colossus in a horrible muscle suit yep in a hilarious vinnie jones performance i think do you mean you mean juggernaut 
Oh, sorry, yeah. Colossus is good. I think this guy's <laughs> fine, actually. Yeah, right. So huh? I meant, yeah, you're right. Yes, it, the thing that you said. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the Vinnie Jones muscle suit, mortar and pestle bowl head? <laughs> Be- b- bad, weird, hate it. <laughs> and just just put in because people wanted the juggernaut because he was a meme at that point, I um, think. The jug- he's the juggernaut, bitch. Yeah, precisely, yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, there's throw bones out of his wrists, guys. Oh, yeah. Guy. Who Wolverine fights in the forest? Some some sort of riff on the character Marrow. Yeah, I believe so. Ah, uh, there's one inch Spikes guy <laughs> who somehow has ingratiated himself in the top tier Magneto group of yeah of, of mutants. And I mean, if you I, I, again, if you haven't seen this movie, it's a guy <laughs> whose whole power he's some sort of a kidna guy. Yeah, and his whole skill is like one inch worth of spikes come out all over his body. Yeah, so he's a lethal combatant if he can get to within one inch of you, and maybe he's cradling you in a in a hug, maybe. And you're really lean because otherwise, if you had a little bit yeah. of mass on you, he wouldn't get through. Maybe you. they're poisoned. They did say that. Yeah, right. Also, you could just have them on his hands then. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't need to bring you into a hug, does he? No. Yeah, so he needs to give you a big hug. Yep. I presume they're not poisoned. Mm. And, okay, because you look at that group that he's got. He's got a dude who can manipulate fire. He's obviously Magneto. That's, there's no explanation required. Mm. He's a big magnet. Uh, <laughs> Mystique, who loses yeah. her powers, but again, amazing mutant. Picks up the new one that can fly. Yeah. I'm uh, not going to fly. That can run real fast, like yep. a Quicksilver one. Yep. And there's one that the can multiple do, like, man Multiple there. man's amazing. Again, under used yep so one that could be silo yeah and then you've got one inch spike guy then you got one inch spike guy how did he get in there he just got a few tattoos and went yeah this is all I'm, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm yeah look this. if i wanted to i could spray these spikes out for hundreds of feet in every direction <laughs> but i save that up so just put me in the inner circle and when it comes to the crunch when all the chips are down when bloody all the x-men are coming to get you and there's no metal so you're vulnerable. <laughs> I'm going to do the shoot spikes out from all directions. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. And Magneto. they're probably poisonous. They're definitely probably poisonous. <laughs> I mean, I'm obviously immune to the poison, so I can, you know, this is not, I can do this all day. Yeah. But, but you, you, no one else you'd could. be poisoned. Yeah. Obviously. But you mentioned, is that person Psylocke or whatever? Uh-huh. There's a lot of, is that person supposed to be the actual version of that character? Yeah. Because there's Trask, who looks nothing like the Trask who shows up in later movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's Colossus, obviously been recast for Deadpool, but who cares because Deadpool lives in his own space. Mm-hmm. Uh, Moira McTaggart yes. shows up as the Doctor Who has Professor X's twin. You don't think it's his twin, but it's his twin. And isn't Rose Byrne. Yes, and isn't correct. Rose Byrne. But that doesn't really matter. There's no, Angel again. Because yeah. the timeline, and even though they fixed the timeline, yep. it's not fixed. No, It's always sure. been junk. We've got a video on it if you want to check it out. I think what you said, the explanation for this is if you sort of remember the last movie, that's all you need to know. Exactly. If you sort of remember the last one, you go, oh yeah, I remember that actor did this or this character did this. But if you go back one more, you go, but wait a minute, he was torn to pieces in the last movie. <laughs> Why is he back together? I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I, okay, here's something I do like at this. Yes. I really like how they handle, where they do briefly handle it, that Professor X completely fucked it. With the Dark Phoenix thing. Like he built the mental barriers in her mind. Yep. And then Wolverine's like, what are you doing that for? And he's like, you don't understand. I'm I'm up here taking grenades. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm talking right, about? Uh-huh, yeah. And then he gets his come up and so I guess because he explodes or whatever, you know, because you reap what you sow. Yeah, right. And if you telepathically block a fire bird presence from space or maybe not from space, then maybe that person will explode you one day. Absolutely. As the metaphor goes. That's precisely it. Yeah. James Marsden. Uh, goes around, comes around. That's right. And it's fire <laughs> birds and uh, tearing you to bits. <laughs> that's right. James Marsden famously left this movie to be made cuck of in another superhero movie. <laughs> yes, for sure. I don't like using that word. <laughs> but that's what he said. <laughs> that's that's what... a direct quote from him. He said, look, I'd like to... Mo- I've had a lot of fun and it's a great working with these people, but I just want to be a cuck in another superhero movie. So, <laughs> so yeah, so he gets his... Yeah, he gets it, the love of his life stolen by Superman and this, it was... She was stolen by uh, by Wolverine. Although she chooses Scott in the end, doesn't she, or something? Yeah. It doesn't matter. And then she explodes him or whatever happens to him. It's not important. He's... He comes back because of time travel. He later. does come back, but again, it's left it's left very <laughs> ambiguous because it's assumed he's dead in this movie. Yeah, but you never see a body and you never see a flashback. No, you just see his visor. Yeah, maybe she teleported Glasses. him somewhere else. We'll never know. His yeah. Oakleys. Yeah, his Oakleys. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. His speed dealers. <laughs> um, but yeah, we never. Because we never come back to this timeline, really. Yeah. So, I mean, he gets undestroyed in at the end of Days of Future Past. Yeah, he's back. But we don't know... At with that... him, some even speedier speed dealers. <laughs> yeah, boy, does he. But also, it's at that point we don't know whether the Dark Phoenix saga happened, like which version of it happened. Yeah, right. But I guess it's this new one that happened. Yeah. 
right? I guess. I guess? Yeah. So does that, does the final sequence in Days of Future Past, side note, take place after the events of the, the, new, new, Dark the new Dark Phoenix? I guess. Unless or- they're all killed, in which case they've broken the timeline again. Good work. Great stuff. Look, I don't want to, look, I don't want to make any assumptions. I don't want to assume the worst, but they're going to break the timeline and ruin it again. <laughs> the last one. It doesn't matter. Yeah. X-Men Ghost School is never coming out, remember? Yeah, okay, I get it. Disney are going to bury it. Good. Uh, it's got my favorite comic book trope from 2002 to 2013 which is a truck flip. Oh, yeah, so good. <laughs> they can't stop doing a truck flip. Again, we're just truck truck and train drivers in this universe. <laughs> they just have a little handbook next to them. And it says, what happens if you see a guy in front of you on the train tracks and he's putting his hand up in a threatening manner and you just go through it and you go, okay, well, he's, he's wearing a lot of metal. So maybe he's got magnetic power. So yeah. let's go through here. Okay. Mm, okay. He's not protected by anything. That's probably, it's probably some kind of force field situation. Do you think he's an illusion? Is he flickering? What's going on? <laughs> Just hit the brakes. Just hit the brakes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's a truck flip. It looks good for truck flips, mm. to be fair. What well, another thing I do think looks good in this is the destruction of Jean Grey's childhood home. Yeah, okay, that does. Like look it's good. all kind of shattering and and mm-hmm. you know and shaking and the the water's pouring upside down, etc. And so forth. There's a great cowboy switch when Wolverine <laughs> gets thrown through the roof. Oh yes. And then a stunt actor drops back through the other side. Oh yes. Uh-huh. I think it's quite good. Uh-huh. And I really like the Professor X being exploded effect. Yeah. And I think and I think it's also like I like that character. Yeah, for despite sure. Despite a lot of these movies, yeah. some of them are good. And it was. And I like him. And it was you know it was it was two and a half movies in the lead up. It wasn't like yeah. we're just going to blow him up. It yeah. It's just you know. And of course, he had been removed from the game in both previous movies. <laughs> Professor X. Professor X. But in this one, yeah, you're like, well, okay, he's a he's a good character, and he do, he's not always right, but he he does, you know, he has he's a, he's a character we we can believe in. Yeah. And then, bam, dead. And now he's in all our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, at $210 million, this is the most expensive movie ever made at the time. I thought you were going to say, at 210 minutes, I'm like, wow, this was actually a breeze. This wasn't so bad. Great line is a good line. When they moved the bridge, the bridge from Full House, which mm-hmm. is the, what I call it, yes. across... To, that's what they call it. That's what what's the plaque the on it says. What's the island called they go to? The island... Is it, is it Alcatraz? Is it supposed to be Alcatraz? It's called the island that you get to from the bridge from Full House. That's what it's called. There's a plaque. If you move the bridge. If you move the bridge. <laughs> yes. If we were to move the bridge. <laughs> I don't think he needed to move the bridge, quite no, frankly, no. but he moved the bridge. Mm. And he goes, Charles always wanted to build bridges. <laughs> Terrible <laughs> line. First of all, you're not building anything. You moved a bridge. You moved a bridge. If you said, Charles, Charles always, always wanted, wanted to move, move the bridge. The bridge. <laughs> you know what happened is, is he moved the bridge and then all his followers looked up at him, yeah. like expecting a big line. <laughs> and he just sort of made the best of a bad situation. <laughs> And they also there was tepid applause. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. I guess so, yeah. yeah bridge. Mm. Yeah. You said bridge. Uh, there's another bit where Magneto goes, humans and their guns. Because mm. he thinks they've got metal guns. Yes. And they've got plastic guns. Ooh. Is he not... Earlier, he's like, Wolverine, I can smell you out of Antium. You stink to high heavens. You mm-hmm. can't tell if somebody's holding a metal gun. You don't know that? Oh, that's a good question. That's all I'm saying. Maybe they were carrying, like, a whole bunch of fishing weights in their pockets <laughs> to trick him. And he's like, there seems like there's a lot of metal over there. <laughs> Yep, get a chance it with this line. Oh, no! <laughs> this, this is the bit that I remember you talking about at the time that you didn't like. The last battle's just generic mutants running in. Oh, yeah. Like, they all can teleport. Yeah. And they all have They all have one-inch spikes. They're all, yeah. <laughs> they're just, all like, I'm going to shoot out my spikes any second now. Yeah. And there's some of them which I don't mind that stand out. There's the guy who Wolverine keeps cutting his arms off. Yeah, and right. And he's like, come on! Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Come on! Yep. And he kicks him in the balls. That's pretty good. That's great stuff. But I, yeah, like it didn't... Come on! No, 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 I, yeah, no, I get it. But it's it kind of like... Yeah, it's like, well, they just had the teleport effect yeah. on their computers. And they were like... like the, no, bamf. Let's, the BAMF. The BAMF. A BAMF. A BAMF. <laughs> let's just put in some more BAMFs. No, give us... Let's, and let's put them all in black leather. Yeah, and that's have fine. Them run at each other. I mean, they, they're always in black leather running at each other, aren't that's they? That's true, yeah. But it's mutant on mutant. And mm. the oh yeah, the kid, he's, he's a cure. Is he oh, leech? Yeah. He's kind of leechish, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I like Iceman versus Pyro. Me too. I think it's a good payoff. Me too. To a character, well, both of which were in the first one, but Pyro was played by a different actor. Yes. Yes. And it was a good it was a good payoff, and we finally got the evolution of Iceman into the full kind of comic book man built yeah. from ice that we never see again. That's right. So that's pretty great, right? No, I think he does it in Days of Future Past. Oh, and then yeah. he's melted down or whatever mm, in the future. Cool. But yeah, good on your Iceman. Nice. And great ice skating on the fly. Yeah, he is. We all are impressed with you. And Proper your twin. Applause. Brother. <laughs> yes. Red Proper. hot applause. <laughs> Red hot. Uh, what do you think about the Magnetos gets tricked by Wolverine and he gets stabbed with the cure and then he's like, now I'm just like everybody else. What do you think about well, that? Well, I think, again, that's I think the plot had to go that way. 
Yeah. You know, they were like, all right, well, we've got to, we've got to have Magneto lose his powers at the end. So let's just. Oh, does he? I mean, he does, but, but he doesn't. But does he? But he. I mean, he does initially. Well, he does initially, but then in the but next movie, he? they're like, well, we need him to have his powers back. Yeah. So, but also, of course, in what is. What's well, not a post credit scene? Yes, but there's the he moves the the chest bit at mm-hmm. the ver- at the very very end yeah. as Angel is flying over and people are like who the fuck is that? Yeah. He is amazing. Yeah. I bet his dad's a real ugly, but that guy, <laughs> guy he's be- got a beaut. <laughs> well, actually, the twist there originally was a Magneto. The the chest piece was actually made of wood, and it's, it turns out Magneto's powers have evolved. Now Just he's wood. wood. He's Woodneto now. <laughs> wood-neto. Yeah. What about Magwoodo? Does that work? Yeah, that works as well. The next movie is him just deciding on what name to use. Excellent. Yeah. Big wooden helmet? Yeah. Great. Uh, Gene dies. Yep. And that's fine. And I don't care. All I was thinking the whole time was, how come Wolverine's pants didn't disintegrate? Everything else on his, like his whole X-Men outfit <laughs> came off and his skin's coming off. Yeah. I can see his metal skeleton underneath. You wanted to see his metal dong underneath? Yes. Does mm. he have a metal dong? I don't think so. I think he does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's he does. one for the ages. <laughs> I don't think he does. No. Just to clarify, mm. yeah. Look, I think this is. Oh, there's a post credits where Professor X is back. Uh, who cares? Yep, <laughs> because he just is. I think this is fine. I don't think it's atrocious. No, I don't think it's atrocious. I, I think it'd be atrocious now if you yeah. released it now. Yeah, which may be what the new Dark Phoenix. Well, I haven't seen it yet. I bet there's a bloody truck flip or a train flip in it. There's no, there's no way there's not a train flip. There's a train twirl even. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Mix it up. Yeah. They're taking all sorts of different degrees of action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you think of this, though? Again, it's, it's better a, than Spider-Man 3. It is better than Spider-Man 3. But again, it's a, pro, it's a product of its time and it's, it's, a, it's a superhero movie. I don't know. It just feels like that, that way of making these movies is gone now. Yeah. We, we can't go back to it, I don't think. The funny it th- feels dated and it feels incomplete yeah. and kind of just clunky. Despite being $210 million, it feels cheap in parts yeah. a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Because I'd imagine a lot of that money went into, well, well we've got to get Halle Berry back. So we've got to give her $15 million or exactly, whatever. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. She dropped that Storm accent, didn't she, pretty quickly? She <laughs> did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do like the new Storm wig every movie. I'm like, what What kind of wig is Storm going to have this time She's around? She's a lady of fashion. She's got to have that I can new, appreciate new that. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm there for it. Mm. I appreciate it. Yeah. The other thing is, a lot of these movies, and this is no exception, one of the producers on this is Kevin Feige. Oh. And a lot of the mistakes that he saw that these movies made he then didn't make for, oh, for, right. the, for, for, uh-huh. his, for the MCU. Yeah, right. So he was there for like a lot of these early days, mm-hmm. X-Men movies and Spider-Man Don't hire Brian so. Singer. That's right. Don't hire Brett, Brett Ratner. Ratner. Yeah. And obviously that's been carried on, you know, for the 11 years of Marvel movies that they've been as of so far. So look, even if you hate this, at least we got better movies as a result because somebody didn't hire Brett Ratner. In Very a, true. For their movies. Uh-huh. And that's X-Men f- first days... The f- Last stand. Last, Last stand. <laughs> <laughs> Very confusing. That wasn't a bit. I genuinely couldn't remember. They should have called it first. Last stand. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? I bet they just couldn't wait to use those three Wolverine claws in the. Oh in the my posters. goodness! <laughs> I bet we'll find out later that X Men One and Two didn't make any money, and they're just like, well, we gotta just push it through. Just push three through. We want to see the three claws to make the three. Exactly. Uh, this- oh my god! And this one isn't making any money, but just push it through to X Men Six. We want to see him double fist those claws. <laughs> Which one is X-Men 6? So the next one's Origins. Are we counting Wolverine's spinoffs? Yeah, I guess so. Then I don't know. <laughs> Origi- I, refuse, I refuse to think it's Origins and then First Class and then The Wolverine, I want to say. Yeah. Maybe that's... The, you could double quads that yeah. on The Wolverine 6. Yeah, and then it's Days of Future Past. Yeah, That's okay, right. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. Uh, look, there's been Caravan of Garbage with this every Tuesday. If you've got something you want us to talk about, whether that be a movie or a video or a comic or a TV show, whatever, we'll take a look. We don't mind. We'll do anything. We'll do anything. And we also have videos. We'll, we'll, every... we'll, we'll criticise your thesis. Yep. You got, a thesis, you got a master's thesis out there? We'll summarise it. We'll make fun of it. We didn't like, worry about you it. You used the wrong spacing also. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Looks like somebody didn't have enough words, so they've moved it up to 12.5 font. <laughs> hey, look, we've all been there, mate, but uh-huh. I know all these tricks because yeah. I did them. I lived them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, we do videos every Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday, and we've got a podcast on the new Dark Phoenix movie from our podcast, The Weekly Planet. Oh, it's going to be so good. Every Monday we talk movies and comics and TV shows. Uh, but there's a bunch of episodes on a bunch of comic movies and just movies in general and TV shows. If you do want to check them out, that is linked below. I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Both of us are on Twitter. And if you're on Twitter, that's good too. We're all on Twitter. Just one big happy family. Huzzah, hurrah.
Goodbye. Grab that jammy, guys. We'll see you next week. Huzzah, hurrah. What do you think? New catchphrase. I hate it. Wood Nito. Yes. That's my new catchphrase. Oh, now. then I love that. I love <laughs> okay, that because it's something I've said. Good. Okay, bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.